everyone, it's Amy. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint a Cruel Boys Gut Ripper from the Dominion box set. I'm going to be painting it in the same scheme as the box art. So let's get started with the base coats. I've sprayed the model with an airbrush using Vallejo Surface Primer Grey. I've started with a grey undercoat because it would be a good undercoat for that bright green skin. Um, it would allow it to go on a lot nicer and smoother. For the skin, I'm using the new Citadel base paint, Uruk Flesh. Applying this to my palette, I slightly thin it down with water in the brush and apply it all over the skin of the orc. With the skin base coated, I'm now going to paint everything else black. You can use any black paint for this. Uh, I'm using Vallejo Model Colour Black because I like the matte finish to it, so therefore the recesses will be matte. Next, I'm going to base coat the cloth sections on the model. These are mainly the pieces of fabric rather than any straps. For this, I'm using the other new Citadel paint, Fondia Brown. The model has a lot of brown fabrics on it, so to get some variation between the elements, I'm now going to use Rhinox Hide to base coat the straps on the body, arms and the legs. Leave the belt though, because we'll paint that a third brown colour next. To allow the belt to stand out from the fabric, I'm going to paint it a little bit of a brighter brown. Using Mornfang Brown, I base coat the belt. For the spear handle, I'm going to go for a dark grey tone, as there's already a lot of brown on the model. For this, I base coat it using Skaven Blight Dinge. Moving on to painting the shield, for this I'm using Mephiston Red. This takes a couple of coats to get a solid finish over black, and remember to paint the back of the shield too. The tassels on the shield, I'm going to paint them in a teal colour, which is a nice contrasting cool colour to that warm red. For this, I'm going to use Dark Reaper. For the eye patches on the orc and the shield, I paint those using a bad and black. I base coat the stone glyph hanging around the neck using Mechanica Standard Grey. I pick out the teeth and the inner portion of the mouth using Rhinox Hide. For the studs, teeth and the eye on the shield, I'm going to paint those using Rune Lord Brass. Finally, for the rest of the metallics on the model, including the spear tip, the spikes and the dagger, I paint those using Vallejo Metallic Air Gunmetal. The model is now fully base coated and I'm now going to move on to shading. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying this tutorial. If you're new to Siege Studios, we are a premium miniature painting service with over 50 artists. Here at Siege, we offer four painting levels, ranging from our bronze premium gaming quality up to our platinum competition standard. For your free quote today, follow the link in the description of this video. To begin the shading stage, I'm going to shade all of the fabric, the various straps and the brass teeth and studs on the shield. I've decided to shade all of these using Agrax Earthshade. I apply this straight from the pot, but I'm careful with how much I apply, trying to avoid applying too much and any pooling. For the blue tassels on the shield and the weapon handle, I'm going to shade these using Null Oil. Again, I apply this straight from the pot, but I'm careful with how much I let into my brush, and I apply these to these areas carefully. For the other metallics on the model, including the spear tip, the shoulder pad, armour on his leg and the dagger, I'm shading these with a 50-50 mix of Null Oil and Agrax Earthshade. This is a pot that I've mixed up of the two shades for ease of use, and I'd recommend you doing the same if you want to use the same mix. I apply this straight from the pot all over these areas. Moving on to the skin, I'm going to apply a shade of Death World Forest which I thin down on the palette using Lamian Medium. I then apply this to the recessed areas of the model, such as in between the fingers, in the folds of the muscle, recesses of the face, and any areas that I want to be in shadow. I want to add a little bit more depth to the deepest recesses of the skin now. So using Castellan Green, I thin this down on the palette using water and apply this to the deepest recesses only, such as the deepest folds of the skin and in between the fingers. 
Finally, moving on to the shield, I apply a first soft shade using corn red, which I thin down with water so it's flowing quite thinly, and I apply this all over the red shield. Mixing Incubi Darkness into Corn Red, I apply this into the recesses of the shield to provide a more deeper shade. I'm now moving on to the highlighting stage and I'm going to start first with the skin. The skin is looking quite dark right now with all of those shades and it's looking a little bit messy in places. But what I'm going to do now to fix that is use Urug Flesh to do both some layering back up and also glazing over the darker shaded areas to turn them down. The first highlight I'm going to apply on the skin is a 50-50 mix of Uruk Flesh and Ogryn Camo. I apply this mainly as a highlight defining the musculature of the skin. The final highlight I apply is Ogryn Camo, and I use this to pick out the sharpest edges of the skin, defining the musculature and any raised areas of the skin. I'm now going to add some glazes to the skin to give it a little bit of interest and give it a little bit of life. To start, I'm going to glaze some Kislev flesh over the knuckles, knees, elbows, nose and the ears to give it a little bit of a fleshy kind of tone. Using corn red, I apply this as a glaze over the lips, around the nose and the eyes to again give a little bit of interest and life to the skin. Be careful with this though, as you want it to be subtle. I pick out the teeth using a shabti bone. I give the teeth a highlight using pallid witch flesh. I pick out the very tops of the teeth with this. I'm going to paint the eyes red to contrast with the green and also to make them look quite evil and menacing. Next, I apply Wild Rider Red to the eye to provide a brighter highlight. I apply a small white dot highlight to the corner of the eye to give the impression of a light reflection. To highlight the cloth on the miniature, I start building up a textured effect, first using Fondia Brown. I apply this as dots, scratches and small marks to build up a weathered appearance. Next, mixing Fondia Brown and Galthor Brown in a 50-50 ratio, I repeat the previous step, drawing scratches, lines and dots to add more texture. Finally, using Carrick Stone, I add this to the previous mix to brighten it. I repeat the previous step, focusing this on the very edges. I also use this to draw some scratches and marks too. And I also use Carrick Stone to pick out the stitching. To make the stitching on the fabric look a little bit grimy, I give this a wash using Agrax Earthshade. I apply this straight from the pot, but I only use a small amount on the brush. Moving on to the straps now, using Gawthor Brown, I apply an edge highlight to these. You can mostly use the edge of your brush for this. Adding a second highlight to the straps, I use Bane Blade Brown and repeat the previous step, running the edge of the brush along them to pick them out. I want the straps to look different to the fabric, so I've decided to dull them down a little using Null Oil. To highlight the belt, I'm using Scrag Brown, and this will make the area a more ready brown and will stand out against the fabric. 
To brighten the stone glyph, I'm going to reapply Mechanica Standard Grey, leaving the recesses darker. I apply an edge highlight to the stone glyph using Dawnstone, picking out the edges and around the eyes. I've decided to add a little bit more shade to the eyes and the mouth of the stone glyph to add a little bit more definition, and I'm doing this using Vallejo Model Colour Black. To highlight the spear handle, I'm using Storm Vermin Fur, and I use the edge of the brush to do this. It gives a little uneven finish, but that's perfect for this material, as I imagine it to be made of some kind of wood. Moving on to highlighting the shield now, I'm first going to layer it using Mephiston Red to brighten it back up and re-establish the areas I want to highlight. I apply this to all of the raised areas. First highlight I'm going to use for the shield is Evil Sun Scarlet and I apply this to the raised areas. The second highlight for the shield is Wild Rider Red and I reapply this within the previous Evil Sun Scarlet highlight, picking out the edges. To highlight the eye patches on the shield and the Uruk, and also the blue tassels on the shield, I'm going to use Dark Reaper. I use these to pick out the raised edges on the tassels, leaving the recesses dark, and I also apply a chunky highlight to the eye patches. I apply a second thinner edge highlight of Fenrisian Grey within the previous Dark Reaper highlight on the eye patches, and for the tassels I pick out the edges. To neaten up the highlighting on the eye patches, I cut back into the Fenrisian Grey using Dark Reaper, and also cut back into the Dark Reaper using Abaddon Black. Now to add some interest to the metallics on the model. First, using Green Stuff World's Liquid Pigment Orange Rust, I apply this all over all of the silver metallics on the model. I want to add some verdigris to the brass parts now, so using Green Stuff World's Liquid Pigment Verdigris, I apply this all over the studs and teeth on the shield. Using Green Stuff World's Liquid Pigment Burn Earth, I apply this to the metallic areas I applied the rust to. This paint has a slight ready brown tone to it, and it works really nicely with the bright orange. It makes the metallics look both dirty and rusty. To highlight the metallics, I use Vallejo Metallic Air Silver and apply this as an edge highlight to the metallics. I also use this to draw some scratches and marks to imply battle damage. To pick out the brass parts on the shield, I highlight using Canoptech Alloy. I use black to neaten up the verdigris on the teeth where it's overspilled a little bit and the black also provides an outline around the teeth and helps provide some contrast to help stand them out. After finishing the model I decided that the shield needed an extra bright to highlight, so using Fire Dragon Bright I apply this to the edges of the shield picking out the brightest points. For the basing, I've decided to go for a dark grey scheme, which will contrast with the brightness of the models. First, I apply PVA glue to the base, and then stick on a couple of small pieces of slate to be rocks. I then place it in the tub of sand, wiping off any excess on the edge of the base. While the PVA glue is still drying, I apply a coat of Mechanica Standard Grey. I water this down on the palette and apply small drops to the base. I left the bases to dry overnight fully, 
and now I'm going to apply a wash all over the base using Null Oil. Once the shade has dried on the base, I give it a first dry brush using Carrick Stone. I dry brush the base again, this time using Screaming Skull. I pick out the rocks on the base using Administratum Grey. I give the rocks a shade using a 50-50 mix of Agrax Earth shade and Athernian Camo shade. Once this is dry, I dry brush the rocks using Administratum Grey. I apply some Gamers Grass Beige Tufts to the bases using PVA Glue. To darken the tufts a little bit so they don't catch the eye, I give them a wash using Agrax Earthshade. And that is the Cruel Boy Gut Ripper now finished. I really enjoy painting this, uh, they're really cool models and they've got a lot of techniques on them that are quite fun to paint such as all the rust and the weathering. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.